Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Sanj Kakar. And I'm Tracy McRae. We see them every day on highways and interstates, behind the wheel of a semi-truck delivering goods all across America. We're talking, of course, about truck drivers. What you may not realize is that being a long-haul trucker is one of the unhealthiest jobs in America. Hmm. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 7 out of 10 long-haul truck drivers are obese. That's more than double the rate of other U.S. adult workers. Obesity can lead to a wide range of health problems, including diabetes and heart disease. So what can be done to help people with sedentary jobs, like truck drivers, and to help them stay healthy? Here to discuss is Dr. Clayton Cole, Chief Preventative and Occupation Chief of Preventative and Occupational Medicine at Mayo Clinic. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Cole. It's nice to have you. you. Nice to be here. So why the interest in studying long-haul truck drivers? Well, I think that we know that um, trucking uh, touches every bit of our lives, whether we put our kids on a school bus in the morning uh, or pick up goods and services from the local variety store. Um, it's been hauled by a, touched by a truck, and uh, and obviously uh, we need drivers to move, uh, uh, essentially move America forward. Um, uh, everything from tank trucks to you know to your local delivery truck for uh, a restaurant or a store. Um, drivers are in very tight demand right now, um, and particularly finding. Uh, drivers that are dependable, that are healthy, and um, obviously when something comes up that is uh, of a health concern, it makes a difference to the motor carriers, in other words, the employers of these vehicles, because, you know, there's obviously liability that goes with that. So, so in general, um, you know, uh, trucking is, a, is an incredibly important thing to all of us, and the health of those drivers is important to us at Mayo Clinic. So, Dr. Cole, uh, truckers have obviously been around since time immemorial. What's the recent interest been? Has, has there been a spike in problems amongst truckers? Why is this happening? Yeah, uh, uh, about five years ago so or so, the agency that, that governs commercial truck and bus drivers called the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration um, began to really study this more and found that the actual fatality rates were going up slightly rather than down. Um, as part of that effort to try to control that, they made a, a, a sort of a wholesale set of regulatory changes, which included how the medical exam was being performed. Um, to that end, what they did was they required that any truck driver who would see a medical examiner to get certified to drive medically would have to see an examiner that had passed an approved course and then took a secure examination and passed that and, and were placed on a registry called the National Registry of Certified Medical Examiners. It, it, it increased the regulation and the goal was to make it safer on the roads in the future. So to be a so to be a trucker, do you need to have a physical test? Then you look at their. You mentioned obesity. Are you checking their vision, for example? Um, correct. They have to meet certain uh, visual acuity requirements. Uh, they uh, certainly, if they have uh, signs or symptoms consistent with things such as obstructive sleep apnea, which are, are typically associated with uh, people who are obese. Um, these are all things that potentially could affect safety on the road by being overly tired and, and fall asleep at the wheel. And there's been a number of uh, nationally noted uh, accidents out there with fa uh, fatalities uh, due to, for example, obstructive sleep apnea. So as examiners uh, here at Mayo Clinic, we look at drivers um, and actually have taught one of the courses across the country, and we've actually trained about 10% of the uh, examiners across the country to really look for how to do a forensic evaluation and, and to really make sure that the drivers that we are certifying are safe to be on the road. The safety part is, of course, of great concern because we're on the road with these truck drivers, but the bigger picture, too, is that uh, a lot of Americans have sedentary jobs, so the health um, implications can be similar. True. Only the difference is, is that in this particular case that there's significant amount of stress and um, when I say that um, a driver can be perfectly on time but the problem is is they may show up at their destination and someone's not there to unlock a gate or open a door or etc or uh, what's been told to us by uh, commercial truck drivers that we've uh, had actually at our courses uh, to, to help uh, train the providers 
is that uh, there's nothing more impotent feeling than having a something going on at home and having your dispatcher send you the opposite direction. So they're at the mercy of the employer uh, many times, and it, it, it tends to be feeling, especially in larger motor carrier uh, organizations, that they're just a number. So mental health is part of this as well. Is that part of the screening? or Well, it's not screening, but is that part of an exam? Well, I guess you could consider it screening. You know, when we go through and do an examination on a driver, we go through a whole checklist of different organ systems, and, and mental health is, is among those things. Certainly uh, individuals with uh, severe depression, uh, uh, psychosis, uh, bipolar disorder. These are all things that we need to screen and mitigate and make sure they truly are safe to be on the road. Um, I guess the thing to think about is, unlike us, that we go maybe on an extended commute if we're in a ma major metropolitan area, we of course whine and complain about that. Take that and times it over you know, an eight-hour day times a 40-year career is what we're talking about. And, and that's what really, uh, you know, where that magnifies the stress that's on a lot of these drivers. So, Dr. Cole, my understanding with truck drivers was that they are allowed to drive for a certain period of time and then they have to take a break. Is that still the case or are the regulatory uh, changes happening? Uh, yes, there's been regulatory changes. Um, uh, and, and the idea is is that they don't, much like pilots, they don't want drivers to be at the wheel for ex uh, too long a period of time. The problem is is the way the payment model is for many drivers, it's by the mile. And so if the wheels aren't turning, they're not getting paid. And, and therefore, there's that incentive to, um, to be moving all the time and not to take a break. And, and so the, the hours of service rules have been modified, uh, much to the chagrin of some motor carriers, certainly that want to get the most out of the drivers and the drivers themselves. And so it's done you know, at, at peril of those concerns, but in light of uh, public safety. What are some of the interventions that you propose for truck drivers to use if they're starting to have health problems? I, I mean, they could, it could work with anybody at their job, but uh, what interventions do you have for truck drivers? Yeah, I mean, I think at this point, what we're really trying to emphasize is uh, the idea that you have to be physically fit as a driver. I mean, the drive is not just sitting on a seat and driving. And we try to teach the examiners that we train that um, um, we actually have volunteers and bring a truck and trailer to the course to have them know that getting up into the cab, uh, cranking the landing gear on the trailer, opening the van doors on a, on a, a van trailer, are all, they're all musculoskeletal conditions that we have to think about. And, and so having a more fit driver is something that we're emphasizing with, especially the sort of premium motor carriers, that it pays to have a, a workforce that is healthier, uh, less liability for the motor carrier, and obviously safer to the general public on the road. Who would have known that? So next time I'm at the lights, Tracy, I'll be looking up and giving them a thumbs up. <laughs> Make sure that that's the finger that you're using. The thumbs up. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> We've been talking about ways to improve truck drivers' health with preventative medicine specialist, Dr. Clayton Cole. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Cole. Great to be here. Thanks, Tracy.